Hey, what's up everybody? This is Perry with Premier Guitar here in Nashville, Tennessee. Hanging out with the guys today from Between the Buried and Me. Really excited about that. This is Dusty and he's gonna show us some really, really cool stuff. How about it, man? So this is your, your PRS, this is- Yeah, this is my SIG model. Your SIG. It's awesome. Uh, it's custom cool. color. It's got uh, Seymour Duncans in it with a Floyd Rose. What Duncans are in it? They're mine. You have your own signature Duncans, that rules. Well, they're, it's a more of a prototype for now. Gotcha. Did but. you, were you going after a certain, like, pickup that you already had in mind when you were working on that? No, one? it's actually not like any, any Duncan I've ever played. Uh, I don't know, I just like really dark stuff. I don't like very- high end yeah, yeah, like high-end sparkle very much. So they're, real, they're really like smooth and kind of works well with high gain. Not to be so like, abrasive you know um are they passive mm -hmm. this isn't how they uh this is you know since it's a prototype this isn't what they will look like will look sure. like you know yeah but uh they're pretty cool cool um if you had to make any adjustments now would you change anything about it not really man it's i mean the guitar is perfect and the pickups suit it very well very cool it's yeah I, I, the look is awesome man that that top is great it comes in five colors all satin with black hardware Cool. So, are you? Do you keep this as a number one, and then you have like a yeah? Backup I always the same play thing? this one pretty much all the time, and uh, I've got a. I'll bring like two extra ones. I don't really ever change guitars, so but I, I just bring Throughout them. Throughout the whole and, set. Yeah, I just play one. Me and Paul are both, but we're the same way. But I did have a a weird problem one show on this tour. Um, I'm not sure what it was, but. Uh, I had to grab my backup, that single cut, and my tech, Andy, was able to get it back in a few seconds, and when the song was done, I just switched back. Switched back. Yeah. yeah, so the only time you're switching is if you, like, break a string or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I mean, I just, me and Paul both are pretty, like, we're comfortable. We warm up on one guitar, and we just kind of, none of our songs are in different tuning so there's really no need to change you know what do you guys tune to C sharp so everything across the board is C sharp since the start of the band no kidding is there a reason for that or just it's easy and you don't um, have to well I think it kind of I think it kind of just sounds like us and I mean if you do songs in different tunings you're gonna have to bring out two guitar at least yeah. two guitars per tuning and that's just like seems to be a bit much yeah you know I think C sharp is also like the lowest and heaviest you can get before it starts getting flobby and yeah. kind of. Yeah, it's you know. very clear still, but you can still sound pissed off if you want, but <laughs> um, you can still do all the articulate stuff, you know. For sure. All right, I guess that outside of that stuff, you're you're running Axe Effects, and you've been doing that for a while. Yeah, I um, mean, this is our first tour with the Axe Effects Two XL. Um, we're pretty pretty pumped on it it's a lot different we actually recorded the new record with one of the twos oh really um but we always run through a power amp i'll either run through the the mesa 290 or through my prs archon just depending on how i'm feeling speaking of the archon this is is, is this the, this is the first one ever made right yeah that's what i've been told that's amazing and you worked with prs to kind of design that right yeah i they brought me up when I was on the Coheed tour and we just, I played through some skeletons they had and kind of told them what I'd, what I would change and they swapped out stuff here and there and um, pretty shortly after that, this thing ended up at my house. Yeah. And it's I, pretty, pretty badass amp, man. I heard those at NAMM for a couple of years ago that when they, when they first came out and they, they rip, man. That's a nice it's a very, uh, it doesn't sound like other amps, which is pretty cool, you know? It's like, got its own thing. It's cool that they were able to, you know, produce a high gain amp that doesn't sound like Mesa stuff or Marshall stuff. It kind of, it kind of really does stand alone, you know? I wonder why that is. It's 6L6s, I'm guessing, right? And yeah, it's 6L6. It's got a global presence and depth control. Um, the combo one is sick. I actually want one of those. <laughs> Stick it in your bedroom or would you bring it out with you? Uh, I mean, hell, I may bring it out to like you know, warm up with, but um, I do have one of those Mesa, the Mark V 25, which is so sick, man. I play, I play it through my little 112 Port City cab and it's, it's just like a monster and it's like this tall. Love that. All right, so out of curiosity, I've, I've wondered this myself, 
as a dude that's playing every single night and really getting to hear the difference, I mean, I've always loved tube amps. Can you, do you, do you does it feel different to you on stage when you're playing between the, the, the fractal and a real tube amp? Or does it feel pretty? When you're like, playing the fractal through a power amp, it feels and sounds exactly like a, like a tube amp. You're just able to kind of dial it in a bit more. The, the parameters are pretty much endless, so like, if there's a tube amp quality you don't like, like some weird hiss or it kind of sounds like this or something, you can... Just dial it out? You can dial it out. That's so cool. That's yeah, way, it's, way it's cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool, you know. And so your setup for controlling everything is pretty simple, too. You've just got the yeah, Axe controller. Yeah, I've got the MFC, the, I think it's a Mark III, the newest one. Uh, I've got two Mission Expression pedals, a Port City Salem Boost, and a, a Polytune TC tuner. That's it. Easy pretty, peasy. Pretty yeah. basic. So I've heard a lot about Port City. What's, tell me about that boost. What's the, what's the deal? Just a clean line boost? Man, not just because it's a North Carolina company, but it, it is the best boost I've ever played. It doesn't affect your tone. It doesn't give you more gain. It just makes things like fat and tubey. Like if, I don't know, maybe you're playing like a huge stage and, and your gate is on a bit much and you're trying to do some solo thing, or your clean's getting a little bit drowned out. It's getting choked out a little bit, yeah, boom. Just cut it on and it it just makes everything sick. So it's not something you're leaving on all the time, but just more no. for like leads? Yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty pretty awesome pedal, man. I just got, Tosin's playing one now. I'll let him borrow one of mine for this tour and he loved it, so. And you're, you're running into support city cabs as well, right, that are ported? Yeah, they're 212s and they have uh, warehouse guitar speaker veteran 30s in them. Pretty awesome. We we actually recorded the whole new record, every tone through one of my cabs with those speakers. Did you hand select that speaker? Is it something you AB'd or was it? Daniel from Port City is a close friend and he's kind of like a tone guru and um, they actually made us a custom parallax speaker <laughs> and me and Paul both used them for a while but they were a bit dark. So he recommended, he was like, why don't you try the Veteran 30? It's amazing. And he, he gave me that one in my 112 cab to try. And that cabinet sounds so massive that I was like, what the hell would it sound like to have two? <laughs> yeah. So we did that and uh, me and Paul are both using them and they're just. I'd be so curious to hear that, uh, awesome. the Veteran 30 next to like you know, a vintage 30 or something. It's, just it's a lot bigger. Um, bigger as far as like low bottom end. Yeah, it's not fizzy at all. It's just like a really round, big sounding speaker. It's good for the like junk <laughs> stuff, yeah. you know? That good zip. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's hard to find in a lot of speakers. It is, know? man. And they're like, they just they just sound broken in from the start, kind of. Oh, that's cool. It's bizarre. Wow, weird. Yeah. Well, dang, man. It was awesome to get to take a look at out of your rig. I'm going to grab the rest of the dudes in your band, but yeah, thanks man. a bunch, man. Awesome. Cool. All right, now we're over here with Dan and Bass World. We're gonna check out some really cool stuff like this signature, for example. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. This is a uh, this is a signature bass I did with uh, with Spectre, and it's based off of uh, old NS two thousand one model um, that they did and discontinued right after I got mine in about two thousand one. And um, when they approached me about doing a bass. Um, I was basically like, if we can just make this bass that I've been playing since I was 16, uh, let's go for it. You're like comfortable with it? You like yeah, the scaling and everything? Yeah, it's just everything. And it's still the bass I record with. It's just oh, really? like, I'm just, it's just so like, I mean, this bass is incredible. It sounds great, but it's just like, that one is worn in from like, you know, me playing in high school bands and like jazz band and everything. So it's like, it's beat up, beat up. you know, there's a chunk of it missing, but it's like, it's the one. Yeah. Do you so, leave it at home so it doesn't? No, I have. I still have it. It's, it's it my backup just in case. But you know, it got to the point where, you know, like I'm so thankful that this exists now because, I, like, I would get so scared flying with that one, taking it to Europe, and like, I'm like, what if it got what, lost? What yeah. like, like the the one. So, but I, I love this bass, and it's exactly like like my old one. That's so, cool. Yeah. Does, and so, you know, say I was to go buy this bass, it would be that color look exactly it's this like that. yeah this 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 is it um you know uh i had my friend do the inlay which was fun you know it's just 
just those little things that you've never done before. Yeah, you know, that's and all of a sudden so cool. you have the option too, and it's kind of fun. That is very cool. Yeah. And so your 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 whole rig isn't too complicated. You know, I was I've been a fan of your band for a long time, and then I'm listening to this new record, and I'm like. Oh my God! They must just have gear for days because there's like <laughs> just so many different sounds. But yeah. really, I'm 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 impressed with how streamlined it is. You're it's it's running been the sun. yeah, it's been the same uh, the same setup for the last ten years, which is basically just Spectre into Sun, into the the Ampeg cab, and uh, not much has changed. The only thing that changed is that I actually got a newer version of, well, not you know. I can't say newer because they, they, they were discontinued in the 80s, 80s right? so it's the yeah. same thing. But if you look at this, it looks brand new. It was just, I think some guy had it in his closet. And it never got played. This isn't like a tech went through this. And, no, yeah. Because it looks brand new, like it just it got It does. My friend found it on Craigslist last year. He's like, you need, we need to drive up to Virginia. You need to get this. And it was like, it's 700 bucks. I don't think the guy knew what he had he even. He just wanted no to get idea. rid of it. And uh, I'm so thankful because now I have my, my other one is back up and I've got, you know, uh, uh, Did no, you have to do anything one? to it when you got no, it? No, I, mean, I just took it to my tech. I think we retubed, retubed it. Retubed it? I do, I do a retube about once a year, and it's just, you know, it just keeps it sounding fresh. I mean, since we're running the in-ears, I can tell, like, immediately when there's a dip, you know, any in anything, kind of because the bass yeah. is, like, above everything in my mix. So I, I can tell 100% when it's, when it's time, you know. And I don't mind if that's the only thing that I have to do, you know. Not, not, not bad. I can't believe you found that for seven hundred bucks. I know, yeah, it's pretty insane. Yeah. <laughs> and so you're running, obviously, double duties here. So you're playing yeah. keys at some point, yep. bass. So this is kind of your world, and you're just dancing around a couple this of pedals. Is, yeah, but. yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm dancing around a bit. Um, yeah, I, I, I put this pedal board together specifically for this tour. Um, I usually have like a looping station, um, which I don't use in between the buried me, but I have another group, Triosscapes that's, you know, it's very bass heavy. I'm not just, in this group it's so nice because I can sit back, I'm, I'm the bass kind guy. Of. I just, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Relatively speaking, but I am just focusing on playing bass lines and not so much melodies or solos. And, you know, my other group's fusion things. So oh, wow, I was yeah, able okay. to scale down and get stuff that's specific to, you know, what we're really playing on this tour, which is nice and, uh, you know. So you, you're coming in, I guess, Tuner, regular old chromatic yeah, tuner. Yeah, yeah. And I've um, got I've got the uh, the the tape echo going, um, which is really fun. I kind of have it. I don't know if I can make sound. Yeah, I've got it set um, to kind of create like a just insane kind of like oh. never ending kind of warble and it almost sounds synthy. Very cool. It's ethereal kind of noises. Yeah, I I, I kind of I like having. Uh, different delays set as almost like drone sort of things, you know, where it, where it will loop and kind of like create a new Washes. life of its own. Yeah. yeah. So I like having uh, having that with the Wampler. It's incredible. And I mean, that's it's just a, it's a diverse pedal for sure. Yeah, you know. that was a super cool tune. I have to yeah. play with one of those. Yeah, absolutely. And then this micro synth. I bet that's all kinds yeah, of fun. Yeah, that's that's basically for like the just the, 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 the crazy washy, and crazy stuff. Yeah, yeah, soundscapey kinda, stuff. Tom Sawyer esque. Uh, <laughs> you know, yeah, I totally. Like that, 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 that wonderful thing. I literally use it for that sound on this tour. Just, just that, that awesome. one kind of fun thing. And, uh, and then I don't recognize this duality. Tell me about that. So the duality is, uh, it's, it's a fuzz pedal um, made by Dark Glass um, out of Europe. And uh, it's just, it's, it's an incredible pedal. For so long I was using like the Keeley modded Tube Screamer. And um, the thing that I love so much about this pedal is it has a mix knob, you know, which, you know, for, for bass stuff is so it's crucial. so crucial. To be able yeah. to mix in your actual tone, retain a lot of that body and stuff. And so I used it on the new record and I loved it so much that it actually became the main, the main tone that I had going. So, I, so just out of curiosity, why fuzz uh, as opposed to like distortion? Um, do you feel like it gets you there to where it's like got some heat on it, but you don't have to like totally yeah, destroy yeah, your Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I can, you know, yeah, let's really check out. hear what it sounds like. Oh. So it's like, I, I like, yeah, I like that it's warm um, and that it, uh, you know, it, it, it does get gnarly, but it just, it really retains that the full body sound. And that's just, I feel like it's just so... How so much of your original signal are you mixing in? Was it like half and half? Or it's, it uh, yeah, it's, it's a little bit more towards 
the fuzz right now at this point. Um, but I, I, I kind of flip flop. Sure, and you, you know, and obviously depending. it's not on all the time. It's just right. certain parts. Yeah. You know, the, the weird thing, even though we are on the in ears, sometimes the, the size of the room and how much room you pick up. You know, like I've got my bass mic cranked, so sometimes I pick up a lot of the room. So sometimes my sound is actually changing a little bit from day to day, and I have to adjust uh, my pedal sounds kind of accordingly, since I Makes since sense. I'm hearing the mic and not the DI in my ears. So that's the big thing, and and this is. Actually, I should after after talking about the fuzz pedal. This this is actually my favorite pedal of all time. Pitch shifter, and, and I, I have three of them at home. It's the it's the pitch shift delay, the PS3 by Boss, which they don't make anymore. Yeah, which is why I have three time. at home. Click and, it on. Let me hear it. Let me hear it. Well, I use it on this tour as a chorus. But the reason I bought it was because of the band Caven. I love Caven. Which you know what I mean. So Just that them. that that sound is like. the trails. I love that. that it's, <laughs> it's so fun. I love that you have to tune it because otherwise it gets so like atonal. Oh, you have to kind of dial it in for the key that you're playing. So you actually have to find where the octave is, you know, to get the warble. But yeah, I use that on guitar. That sound, you know, obviously just ripping off Caven and whatever. Caven. And failure and whatever, oh, you know. I just saw Caven and Failure, and I, I just feel like those are the, the, the most underrated bands. Like, if you uh, really just, explore those records, yeah. the tones are great. They're the best. So, so, but yeah, I use it as chorus. I love, I love bass chorus. I'm very cool. I'm just so, that, that, that's the kind of the one thing from like 80s fusion and, and we'll say kind of like, you know, kind of like Queens, right? Kind of, kind of stuff. The, you know what I mean? The proggy rock. Kind yeah, of stuff, where, yeah. Where that was kind of like a big thing in in eighties tones. Heavy and, chorus. Oh, I yeah. love it. Yeah, yeah. On guitars and everything. Yeah, and yeah, a little bit of bass tremolo. A little three knob play. trem. Yeah, yeah. It's it's easy. You know, it's but it's. So you're not having super cool extreme style. trem parts because I, 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 I. No, I I use those it. Those are shallow. Yeah, I use it in one song uh, that we were actually playing at the beginning of this tour, and now we're not playing off the great Mister X. Uh. So. So now I'm not even using it in the set, but it's still uh, it's on the board. You know, I love, you know, I just, I think it sounds so cool on yeah. bass, you know. Yeah, especially bass. It really kind of drives it along, man. Yeah. Fills out the, the the landscape for sure. And then um, a, a DD3, old school. Yeah, and that's just, that's just. Just for a little delay. That's just a very basic, you know, nothing, nothing too crazy. Just, uh, you know, no, no, no big wash or anything. You know, oh, nothing, yeah. nothing crazy, but it's just. That's kind of just like the, the easy standard. I've had that for so long. Um, I love that you can have so much fun with not a whole lot of stuff. Yeah. It's really, really oh, cool. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And um, I'm, I'm big in the, the sound manipulation, which is why I don't have a fractal setup. Um, I, I love actually being able to, uh, you know, change the sounds and work with modulation and stuff like on the fly. I think that's so fun. I mean, that's what I do with the micro synth. That's what I do sure. with the tape echo. In between songs, and, um, you can just start cranking on stuff yeah, and get yeah. really well, it's neat. so nice too I mean like we were talking about the duality if I cut it on in the first song um, and I'm noticing like oh it's a little harsh today or it's not harsh enough it just you know yeah I, I like having that you know I'm just I guess I'm a little old school in that I get regard. it I totally you know it. we have we have that kind of extreme in the group but yeah and then I guess I guess the, the the most oddball thing on the pedal board is the the piano sustain pedal. I'm guessing which, it's for your MIDI controller. It's for yeah. the, the the MIDI controller, which uh, uh, which is fun. And this is a setup I put together this tour where I'm actually I'm running Reason um, on the Microsoft Surface, and that is uh, that's that's my interface for the controller. And that's because a lot of the sounds we created for the new record, record were in reason. Were in reason, and uh, I've got, I've got a great relationship with them, and it's it's been fun to work with them, and uh, very fortunate to be able to use those actual sounds. You know, we're only playing a couple songs off the record now, but when we play the full Coma Ecliptic record next year, you know, my my bank will be full of stuff, and it's just it's so easy. And the pedals, the sustain pedal is great because I can I can play stuff. Be able to sustain it, hold it out, and then switch to bass. Yeah. And vice versa, and it's overlap a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it, it makes it easy, and it, it's nice because you know it gives Tommy, our singer, uh, opportunities to focus on just you know making sure all, all the quirks and all the fun stuff in his vocals can come through without having to worry about yeah all the time being hands on in the keys. And he's still playing keys a little bit he too. He plays right? a lot of keys. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. Yeah. 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 So I mean, the, the, this is really just like breaks where it's just keys. And it's like you can just focus on yeah, do your thing, man. Yeah. You. Yeah, when you guys great. started, it was just a lot of screaming, and now he is really exploring some. Yeah, yeah. This record is is 
I would say like 90, 95% like focus on melody, um, kind of character voices, which works in with like the stories and stuff that he's telling, which yeah. is really cool. And, and that was like just- Like kind of thing. And yeah, and we just wanted to up the theatrics of it all. So it's great because it, it allows him that freedom, you know? Yeah, very, very cool. Well, man, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to us. Thanks um, so much. We're gonna man. go grab Paul and see what he's working with, but see you guys in a second. All right, guys, now we're over here with Paul and other guitar land. You get a SIG, you get a SIG, everybody's got a signature Everybody over six, here. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about yours, this one's awesome. Uh, well, this is Ibanez. Um, it's kind of based, uh, based mostly on the S-series guitars, sure. which they do, but this one is, uh, it's a bit thicker. You can tell their S's are really, Real really thin. Super paper super thin. thin. Yeah. And uh, I, most of them are, you know, mahogany. Um, this one is a little thicker, and it's actually swamp ash. Oh. So it's a different wood than, than most S-series guitars are. So um, it's, uh, it's pretty basic. It's a pretty streamlined guitar because I'm a pretty simple guy. So it's a swamp ash uh, body. I got rid of the tone knob. I've never used a tone yeah. knob in all my years of playing guitar, especially right live. Off there. <laughs> so I was like, I don't need a tone knob. So instead, I have a, a coil tap switch. Cool. Which uh, taps both both pickups, which is very useful, especially in the studio. And I used it quite a bit. What pickups are these? These are my signature uh, Mojo Tone pickups. Mojo Tone's a company based in North Carolina, and um, they they have a incredible pickup line and um, their pickup designer there is awesome a guy David Shepard and he uh, he designed these for me which was great um, I've always had a problem because of our the nature of our music we have a pretty broad spectrum of sounds that we need all over the place from, sure. you know really aggressive heavy stuff to you know friendlier sounds mm -hmm. uh, clean tones and smooth kind of lead tones and stuff so uh, I had a hard time finding a you know a balance between pickup so uh, they did a really killer job this this um, bridge pickup is a, is a ceramic magnet super articulate very uh, you know heavy on the pick attack mm -hmm. um, but still quick not harsh I wouldn't say it's harsh but it's you know you can really hear the the notes and the and the clarity in the pick and uh, which is great and then the, there's a totally different approach for this neck pickup this is an Alnico magnet uh, four or five I can't remember uh, but it's an Alnico four or five and it's a totally just super friendly, since Mellower. I'm using this primarily for leads and clean tones, um, it just has, it's very warm and um, it just complements this body very well because the, the Swamp Ash is a pretty bright Yeah, I was gonna ask, guitar. I mean, from the S series, do you notice a lot of tonal difference since this is a lot fatter and a totally well, different Well, it's fatter, width? so, you know, that affects the tone a little bit too, but mostly the type of wood like this is the first guitar I've really owned that was this kind of wood and first thing I noticed was it was much brighter which I actually like because I can temper that in yeah, the you amp can with my EQ in. and stuff like that and um, and the way these pickups were designed it just works perfectly because I still have you know the, the spank that I need and I think that's a lot of that's coming from the, the, wood. From the wood and then but the, the pickup itself is is very warm it's uh, it's very friendly. That's the word I keep using, um, especially for clean stuff. It just kind of, it feels right. Do you uh, feel um, like uh, there's much of an output difference between these this two? This is much lower output. So you'll notice, like a lot of times, you'll see guitars and the, the neck put, pickup is have, has to be lowered, lowered way down. Mm -hmm. These are almost equal. Yeah, yeah it looks pretty, pretty identical. Yeah. So um, so you can actually raise this up quite a bit and, and get a still get something right. And uh, the so the you know I've got it right now to where the volumes are are equal and. Um, so yeah, this one's lower lower output, um, which it was done you know intentionally to, to just get that more, almost a you know just a more vintage kind of sound. Uh, I didn't want it to be. A lot of times I had neck pickups in the past that were just too harsh. You sure. know, you hit a high note, it's like kind of screaming at you. It's the initial bite of it is like oh, and then it kind of warms out from there. This is like just smooth. For the attack it's is a little lower output, almost like yeah, a, yeah, yeah, and it's just a, it just. It just feels good, like when you play it. So it's a great looking uh, guitar, man. I love the natural finish. Awesome. Yeah, it's, a, it's just cool. a really thin black oil finish. Uh, as you can see, I've already got some some road wear. Some on love it on it, yeah. right here, which is fine. I, I like that. You know, I like. I used to love watching like Stevie Ray Vaughan or whatever. And just guitar just looks beat to hell. You know? Yeah. yeah <laughs> so I, I don't mind that at all. And um, and it just feels good. It's it's got the same finish on the back of the neck as well. They're Very just, cool. Oh, so, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it's really cool. And uh, yeah, I'm super happy with it. 
and uh, shred I think machine it hits, the, hits the streets later this month. I think. Very very cool. You guys so. have to look for this. This yeah. is a great Check looking guitar. Yeah, thank you. And so we're also doing the Axe Effects over here, and you're running the Port City Cavs. Of course, yeah. Um, yeah, similar to Dusty, um, we're running the Axe FX2 XL. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of people run them direct, which they sound great direct. We prefer to sort of power amp it. Power amp it because it's almost like the best of both worlds. Yeah, it's we almost like just our, using it like a preamp. And we're using it as a preamp modeler Still and as an tubes. effects processor. So we're running that through the, um, I'm running it through the Mesa um, 290 and into both of these these cabs, uh, these Port City cabs. Port City is another North Carolina company, so as you Are can you, see, we have a little bit of a bias. You got, but you got some they love. make really great stuff. Yeah. And Daniel at Port City has always been super supportive of the band, and he makes awesome stuff. So we're super great. proud to use them. But and are you also running the uh, Veteran 30s in here? I the use uh, the bottom cab, I believe, is the Veteran 30s, which we love, and that's what we used on, in the studio as well. And those just, man, they, they kind of are meant to sound like an aged V30. Yeah. But there's some something about the presence of those things that just I just love them. I think they're great. And uh, and then this top one is just a Celestian V30s, which I also love too. Yeah. But um, the balance between the two is actually really cool. So yeah. I've, I've been rolling with that. And uh, but yeah, those Veteran 30s are man, they're they're really great. Yeah, I'm excited so, to check those out. Yeah. Yeah. We love them. The sounds on the on the on the new record are amazing. So. Yeah. I mean, I think uh, it's cool. We have very similar rigs, but because our guitars are very different. Um, we were able to get a really cool balance of sounds on the record. My, my sound is much brighter, um, obviously because of the sure. wood, the scale length, there's a longer scale length. So, you know, it's a, it's, his sound is a bit darker and more heavy on the bass side. Mine's a little crisper Fill and brighter, maybe though. not quite as saturated. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a good balance. Yeah, and cool. we have basically this, a similar kind of balance uh, live as well. So. Sure. Fills, fills the uh, sonic spectrum pretty nicely. So. Speaking of sonic spectrum, uh, let's take a look at some of your pedals. Absolutely. All right, cool. So this isn't super, super complicated. I love that you you got a couple real deal pedals in here yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. And then I guess my first question, Rocktron. Yeah. And that's yeah. what you're using to switch the, the accent. It is, yeah. I've just had, this is the all access, which they, I guess technically they don't make anymore. They make a new one called, I think it's called the MIDI Raider, which I use as, I have as a backup. But um, this one, I'm in. It's been. I've used this for years and years, and it hasn't even coughed. I mean, it's just. That's the one. It's huh? Spot on. It works every night. Knock on wood. So, um, yeah, this is what I'm using to control the the fractal, and um, the, you can configure this thing a number of ways. Um, the way I configure it is these first ten switches are are patch changes sure. basically, program changes, and then these top five I use as uh, instant access. So pedals. like I can, you know, this for example controls the drive block. So okay. this is my rhythm channel. I have a drive block on. I can cut it off and get kind of a, a lower gain sound. So you can hear the... Uh, that's, what it's, that's what it sounds like normally. I can cut this off and, you know. Gotcha. It's a little spongier, less gain. And I use that for like chords and like... Yeah. I can get a little yeah, more clarity out of it and stuff like that. So, um, so yeah, that's how I have it configured. And the way I program mine, I use a ton of different patches because I have a lot of delays that are programmed for the tempo of the song, gotcha. which requires me to use different patches. So I have it uh, configured in song mode. So I have the set list essentially programmed sure. in here. So for example, this first song, uh, we're playing Selkies first, which is an older song. So that's programmed, you know, I have a rhythm, t you know, lead, clean, um, sort of a pushed clean, so cool. it's just got a BB. So you can bank through front. every yeah. song and, and so then, then you have everything already set. Right, and then when I when I go to the next song, which uh, I think, uh, I forget what song it is. I'll find out in a second though. I think it's Astral Body. So for Astral Body is song two. Boom. This is all basically the same, but you can see right there, that would normally just be a clean but right here, it's Astral One, which is a clean, but it's designed specifically for, for that, that song. song. So the delay is for that song. It's it's EQ'd so that it's a little spankier. Um, and so that's what I do for the whole set. I have basically it goes all the way up to um, nine, I think. And nine, we actually play a Bohemian Rhapsody cover. I love on this that you're one. doing that live. And, yeah, awesome. and so I thought it was cool to kind of use like an organy sounding patch for the. Totally got a pipe, pipe organ thing in. Yeah. 
<laughs> <laughs> nice. So well, anyway. it almost had like a V3 kind of. Yeah, yeah. Too. So yeah, it's kind of awesome. organy. It sounds kind of cool, especially when you get to the. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> so we use that, and um, so yeah, basically just have the whole the whole set list in there, Love that. Um, which is cool. Um, and since I use a, you know a lot of patches, I kind of have to do it that way because otherwise I would have to switch banks and stuff. Sure. So I like, like to do it this way, yeah, right, and dance yeah. around. So, um, and again, I can control. You know, this is this is like the drive block for every patch globally. You know, so mm -hmm. I can cut that on and off. This is my noise gate, so I can if I want to feed back or whatever, I have it set up to where I can um, cut the gate off so sure. that I can feed Just back. Turn it off all the way. Yeah. yeah. So um, that's basically. What Very I'm doing cool. there, and, and then when you, so when you're coming, when, when you're out of the box, like not using the fractal, you're going into the Strymon, which is awesome. Yeah, so I do. I mean, I'm I'm pretty old school, so I still love stomp boxes. I just love hitting of the feel pedal. of them. Yeah, yeah, I just, just get I used still to love it. it. Yeah. yeah, so um, you know, not to say you couldn't get a similar sound with the with the axe effects, because you can get pretty much any sound you want. But I just love the way these pedals sound, in particular. So Strymon. Um, you're not playing it in this set? In this particular set, no. I use it mostly, I mean, I use it for a few songs. Uh, mostly a song called Telos, which is off of our last record. Boom. Telos. <laughs> sure. Um, and, like, I use this, it's got this cool ice thing, which is, uh, it harmonizes uh, in, in addition to delay or whatever. So, like, for example, well, here's what it sounds like without it, which is my Telos clean patch. Well, never mind, that's not a good example. Uh, let's use this one. So that's what, just a clean tone. And then when I cut this on, it kind of... Way ethereal. Very so. cool. So yeah, it's almost I got a that. little organy kind of vibe. Yeah, a little bit. Too, yeah. yeah, and it's just got that sort of shimmery, harmonized pitch. It's probably, it sounds like a, maybe a fifth up or something like that. Um, so yeah, I use that. And then you also have the and the then Wampler. the Wampler stuff, which we love. Uh, this is the Wampler Faux Tape Echo. At home, I have the one that has a tap tempo button. Ah, but that must be cool. In this set, it just so happens that the delay tempo I need happens to be twelve o'clock. So <laughs> right I was like, on. "Well, I'll just bring this guy out. right on time." And I love um, it, of course, it has the movement knob. You can engage the 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 faux tape reel yeah. and then control it with this movement. So I've got that actually turned up pretty good, so that I get some, you know, modulation um, out of it. Let me find a good that's not a good one so yeah it's um you know with the that oh yeah it just it's, it's very nice subtle but it's it real, kind of real subtle, warbles yeah. a little bit so i just like it it's it's, it's very sort of vintagey and it just it's it's pretty subtle but i just love the way it the way it kind of gives you that sort of spacey warble. Um, so I use that uh, several times in the set. Uh, then of course you have the all very important Wampler Leviathan, Leviathan fuzz, fuzz. Yeah, buddy. Which I use. I mean, it sounds good on a on a clean channel, and you know, Just like uh, put it right on top. Yeah. So, yeah, I love the way a fuzz sounds for whatever it's worth. I love the way a fuzz sounds on the neck pickup. And some, for some reason, it always sounds good in this neighborhood of the neck. You get down here, it doesn't sound as good, but somewhere in these boxes, it sounds really good. But I also use it uh, <laughs> on the distortion channel, which... Uh, so. Just sounds nasty. Just sounds so, nasty, yeah. yeah. So I use that a couple of times, and it almost gives you this. Got a couple different settings, but it almost gives you this perceived like octave lower kind of thing going on. So use that a couple of times as well, and then um, and then I use this guy, this Port City Boost, so, which is literally the the cleanest boost pedal I've ever yeah, used. Yeah, Dusty was mentioning that. He says it doesn't really color the tone. It doesn't much at color all. the tone at all. It's just a little louder, and so for certain things, you know. Yeah, especially. Ah. Yeah, that'll help you cut through for sure. Yeah, so it just helps you cut through on a solo or something like that. So I'll kick that on if I just needed a little extra 
and then something. Over here, you're doing volume and yeah. And so two expression pedals, Mission Engineering uh, pedals, which we also love, and these things are super road road worthy, very durable. Uh, this is a dedicated. This is the spring loaded one. Gotcha. This is basically a dedicated wah for any patch that I have a a wah, wah block mm -hmm. on the fractal, and then this is pretty much a dedicated volume for any just, patch that yeah. I have a volume. So. Very simple. <laughs> yeah. but, so I love how streamlined you guys have yeah, it for all the streamlined. sounds. We have a lot here. of stuff, but oh. um, you know, this is these things just feel good under the foot. They're just weighty. Built. It's got a yeah, nice travel to exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. So, and of course, you can use that for. There's a few patches that not in this set, but that I use, um, you know, to control delay or um, or a phaser depth. Sure. Something gotcha. like that. You know, you can do. And then uh, this is another pedal I've had for a while. This is the Polytune Good old SEC Polytune. Electronic, which I love. If people aren't familiar with it, it's just, it's great live because you can tune all your strings oh, at one time. Nice. So it picks up all the notes and I can do a real quick tune. And you can also see what's out. Exactly. That's great. Yeah, so like I know right now, I down here, okay, it's going to settle down. See that B string's a little sharp, so I just. Drop it and there it went. Went back in tune. G sharp. Fine a little. tuners. How fun. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I use that live because we, we do have some really quick transitions between songs and I don't really have time yeah. to tune. So that's. And a you way guys to pretty much, it. I mean, Dusty was saying you guys stay on like one guitar the whole night. You don't really I don't swap. have time to switch. I literally, I'm playing the whole, the whole time. That's basically. crazy. So I have, I have enough time to tune, I think, three times in the set. Oh, and wow. And that's so, it. Yeah. So you got to be like kind of particular about when you're rocking out on something, so you're not like knocking your well, guitar. Well, this tune. guitar, man. I mean, it's really you're locking tuners. And yeah, shit it a lot, stays yeah. in tune. I mean, but it does have a floating a tremolo. Work, so, yeah, yeah, but even then, I, I mean, I'm able to, and you know, we have a good guitar tech, fortunately. So he's he keeps this thing playing really good and staying in tune. And uh, because you're right, that is important. Yeah. So. Well, man, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to Thank let us take much, a look at yeah. your gear and stuff. Put awesome. it there, man. Thank very you cool guys for signature. checking it out. Hey, you guys, check out their new record. It's so good. It's really, really great. And uh, see them on this tour. You should definitely do that. Also, check out Premier Guitar for more rig rundowns, uh, review demos, all that fun stuff. Catch you guys later. Don't forget to sign up for PG Perks, your all-access pass to exclusive gear giveaways and discounts on PremierGuitar.com.